In today's show, Regina gives a southwestern twist to cold weather comfort food in a smoky cauliflower au gratin. Guest chef Susanna de Villa takes the mystery out of preparing poblano rellenos with mole verde sauce. A fresh tortilla pimento pie is also on the menu. Learn all about the various types of chilies and their uses as Regina visits a local pepper expert. The libation of the day is a cooling lime chiffon smoothie. And wine expert David Berkeley makes his selection of the week. It's another beautiful day in Sedona, but a little on the nippy side today, so this automatically brings to mind comfort food. Today we're going to be making a classic comfort dish, a cauliflower au gratin. What we are going to do that's a little different from classic au gratins, uh, because oftentimes in the French tradition you'll use a little half and half or even manufacturing cream at the base of the roux. Instead, we're going to have a nice thick roux, but we're using buttermilk and vegetable broth together to lighten up the caloric and fat load in the recipe, but it will lose none of the flavor and richness, and we are going to put a little bit of a spin on it, southwestern style, which is the use of some smoky Gouda cheese, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. There are different kinds of smoky Gouda, and some shallots and jalapeno peppers. So we'll start out by making the roux, and the way I like to begin is we will be using some butter, to start with this, although if you're a vegan, you can use an oil instead if you prefer, and it's, it's perfectly okay. It comes out fine to use an oil at the base of a roux. But I'm going to go with butter in this case. And we'll go with about, oh, three tablespoons of butter here. And we're going to add shallots. And here you want a couple of medium-sized shallots, finely minced, and oh, about a tablespoon and a half or one full jalapeno pepper. And again, you need to kind of know your peppers and know where it's been grown, at least taste a little bit of it in advance. If it's super, super hot, then just cut back a little bit according to your own taste. And we'll do a little flash saute on this for about just a couple of minutes before we start adding the flour and creating the roux. And we'll add some salt and pepper at this point. Normally, I just pinch a little bit of salt in, but because this recipe is going to be baked, you don't have the option to fiddle with the salt quite as much, so we'll put about a teaspoon and a, ha a half of salt uh, to begin with, and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. In this case, rainbow peppers. And we're about ready now for the flour. We'll use roughly equal portions of flour to the butter. and begin working this in. This all has to happen fairly quickly, and soon as we get a mix of the flour with the butter, we're going to begin pouring in the buttermilk. This is a little different because the buttermilk is so thick, it makes an extremely thick roux right off the top before it even has a chance to set up with the heat. Then we're going to thin it out with the vegetable broth. This is going to become very thick as soon as it heats all the way through it bubbles and then we'll begin adding some vegetable broth which uh, not only thins it out a bit but adds a little additional flavor to it. And this is thickened up nicely. We'll put a little bit of vegetable broth in to thin it out a bit now. And the other thing about using buttermilk is that it has imparts that sour cream taste to this dish which is a little more complex in flavor and uh, also very rich tasting. Okay. We have a cup and a half of smoky Gouda cheese. Now, while this is sitting here, I'll turn the flame down for a moment. I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about smoked Goudas. There are different varieties of smoked Goudas. Some of them are more pasteurized. You'll see them often, they'll, they'll be sliced off of a loaf, for example. That tends to be the more pasteurized one. You'll also find them in wax, where you'll have a wax round, often in black wax. And that is an actual cheese that has a smoky process that's taken place. So I tend to go more with the one in the black wax if you can. It's just a little bit more of a whole food. So we're going to put two-thirds of the cheese in here now, which will be a cup of coarsely grated smoked Gouda. And just keep it over the flame long enough to melt the cheese. OK, we have a nice, thickened, and wonderful tasting roux here with the smoky Gouda cheese. We've already parboiled the cauliflower. You only need to cook it about three minutes. And just a little bit of salt in the water. And in today's case, we're going to use these cute little individual baking dishes, which makes a nice presentation. And now we're going to take our smoky roux, smoky gouda roux with jalapenos, and ladle some over the slightly cooked cauliflower and top it with just a little bit more smoky Gouda cheese 
And then this is another fun thing that you can play with a little bit. There are some dairyless Parmesan cheeses available. This particular one is a rice base. You can also find it in a soy base, but they have a, an amazingly similar scent and flavor to them as Parmesan cheese. So what we might do here is just take a little teeny sprinkling on the top just for a little more complex flavor and golden crunch on top. We'll put it in the oven and bake it for about 20 minutes. And we have a wonderful guest coming up. Susanna Davila from Cafe Poca Cosa in Tucson will be here and she's going to make a fabulous chili relleno dish with a green mole sauce. I was going to call today's smoothie a creamy lime smoothie. However, both John and Kit here suggested something like Lime Chiffon Delight might capture your imagination more. So what we have here is a Lime Chiffon Delight in the making. <laughs> and we're going to start out with some limeade, a little bit of limeade at the base of this. And we're going to use about, oh, a couple tablespoons. And then because lime is so tart, and depending on your particular taste, we'll cut it with a little bit of frozen orange juice concentrate as well. It'll still, the lime will definitely come through, but it won't be quite as harsh. And for our protein source today, we're going to use tofu. I've just made a little cut in it. We have about a quarter of a cup of tofu there, and you can use either a silken or a soft tofu, and then we'll use some almond milk because almond goes well with the citrus. You don't want to use dairy. And here we have about, oh, I'd say two thirds of a cup. If you put dairy in here, you're going to have a problem with curdling, so you don't want to use dairy. Use either a nut milk or a rice milk or a soy milk with this. And a little bit of honey. About, remember, we already have sweetness in there, so we'll use a couple teaspoons of honey here. And then the special healthful ingredient of the day is going to be an acidophilus culture. If you don't want to use yogurt at the base of the smoothie for either because you don't do dairy or because you don't want the tartness in that particular recipe, you can always go with an acidophilus either in powdered form or in liquid form. Here we're using a liquid form of acidophilus and you would add about a tablespoon or two and then you still have all the living cultures that are really good in aiding in digestion and protecting the immune system. And finally, some ice cubes. I'm going to start bringing in smoothie tasters so I don't have to stand here and taste my own smoothies all the time. Because I want you to trust that they really are good, not just me saying so. Okay, since you named it, John, I think you ought to go first today. You never get to see John, that's John's hand. <laughs> What do you think? Do you like the tartness? Oh, that's good. I love All it. right. Yes. And now we have our special guest today, Susanna Davila of Cafe Poca Cosa in downtown Tucson. And you're going to make a couple of really wonderful dishes. It's classically um, Mexican food, except done in a little bit different way than what you would normally oh, see in a restaurant. Yes. A fresh, new type of Mexican cuisine. And we're making a vegetarian tortilla pie first, right? Yes. Well, the oil's going, let's go. The oil is going, so we're gonna do first is the tortillas. So we put a little bit of the tortillas in here, and here is my pans, so I can saute them a little bit. This Just a little bit, do. you don't want them, them crispy, into, right? Yeah, exactly. And what we're going to do is put them into little layers in here. This has some nice herbs in it, this dish as well. You know, it's very wonderful, and it's very colorful, and you can do it in small, Portions individually, if you like, or if you have a smaller party. This is how we're going to put So it you're here. lining up or you on can the do sides? them in a larger one. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. A little bit more. I love olive. I love to work with olive oil. So olive oil would be really wonderful, or vegetable oil, if you want. And this to use replaces that. in old times what would have been lard in a lot of Mexican oh, cuisine. No, no, no. You know, in my house, we never cook with any lard or anything like that. So there's no need to do that. Um, I'll use a little bit of the spinach in there. And what we're going to do is put layers of the spinach in here, in such like that. Now we're going to use the same pan and be able to use some of the onions. Saute that as well. Mm, this smells good. Onion. Oregano, a little bit of lemon pepper in there, mm -hmm. and lots of garlic. I love to use a lot of garlic. I love the olive oil in there a little bit more. And we'll saute that very well. The onions are sauteing, the garlic is cooking, 
And then we're going to go ahead and put some, which we already have roasted, roasted. some roasted red bell peppers, yellow peppers, green peppers. And we're going to toss this in here as well. Look at those colors, they're just beautiful. I love the smell of sauteed spinach. There we go. And what kind of cheese are we going to be using over here? Well, today we're going to be using, a, I think, Monterey Jack. Monterey Anyone Jack. can find it anywhere, and it's very simple, and it's mild. Mm -hmm. And for this particular dish, it works very well. Here's some mushrooms, like some mushrooms in here. We'll put that in there. I like to put a little bit more of the oregano, mm -hmm. a little bit of fresh oregano in here. It makes it very, very nice. I'm going to throw more garlic Go in here it. because we it's just garlic. so wonderful. <laughs> And of course, a little bit of the tomatoes. A little baby pear yeah, tomatoes. Yeah, you can use any kind that you will mm -hmm. have at the house uh, if you this have is your beautiful. own garden. Well, this is sauteing. Actually, we're going to okay. um, we're going to take a little field trip now and oh, find great. out about southwestern peppers. Great, okay. wonderful. Peppers. We're here with Jeffrey Herbig and we're talking about peppers in Camp Verde, a lush and green area of Arizona. Tell us a little bit, going from mild over to the hot chili peppers, what we have here. Well, these five varieties, this is, a, this is an Anaheim chili. These are Fresno chilies. These are Poblano chilies, habaneros, and, and uh, red jalapenos. And we, well, we grew all these here at the ranch. Mm -hmm. And I, I do mostly um, medium hot chilies, mm -hmm. not too hot chilies. And, and mostly what I like about this area is we can grow them all the way on the, the bush, all the way to red, which is, uh, which is really an advantage for their flavor. And now on a relative heat scale, we have this neat little visual depiction of the heat scale for peppers. And maybe we can try to locate these particular peppers on this scale. Okay, this, this is uh, the New Mexico's are, are right around three and a half to four on a, on a one to 10 scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Fresnos are a little hotter. That's, that's on the this mediums, one. That's yes. this guy. See, look at. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at above six here, medium hot. And poblanos. There right, we are. right. Green poblano. Right poblano. Which is nice if you're doing a chili relleno, for example. This is a really common one that's used in it's chili relleno. Yeah, it's really it has good. the best flavor, I feel. I think wonderful flavor. Now, and, how about uh, this guy? And You've got a red jalapeno. Yeah, these are these were red jalapenos, and I don't really even see those on there. Today. Oh, let's see. Here they are, right here. Right red there. jalapenos. Yeah, red jalapenos. You can kind of. So, oh, interesting. See how now they're all medium thought, spice. I would have thought jalapenos would be considerably more peppery than the green poblano. I'm kind of surprised, actually. I don't know why I didn't pick that up. And then, okay, let's go to the top of the chart. See these little guys we're bringing up here? These are the habaneros, and they are ten and above. They're pure fire, right? Very hot. Use. Actually, I don't even have the guts to use no. these in cooking. Okay. It's too hot for me. Can you do it? I can't, no. I think pretty much you have to be raised on, on the cuisine to yeah. be able to stand it. And then this looks very similar, just a little different shape, kind of misshapen. They almost look deformed. These are little scotch, scotch bonnets, bonnets, which exactly. are right up there. They're grown in Mexico and the Caribbean, and they're right up there with habaneros on the heat scale. So, in short, I think we kind of want to stay, for most cuisine, we're going to want to stay like a, a seven and eight down. Wouldn't you yes. say? Most southwestern cuisine, that's where they go. But you can use little bits of the, of the hotter ones, uh -huh. just small little bits to add a little accent in the flavor. Okay, well, I'll be staying at seven and below. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Alrighty. Jeffrey. You're welcome. Thank you. Beautiful confetti of colors oh, here. And it's cooked down, and we took the time to cook up some more tortillas while the peppers were cooking. And here we go. And now we just put it in the dish, all these most gorgeous colors. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And here we go. And we'll do a second layer of the tortillas, which here we go. So we're going to put some cheese in here and to cover it up. Now, is this going to be our last layer? Yes, it is. Oh, just a little bit of... So just a little bit. You know, okay. we can do like three layers, you can do four layers, you mm -hmm. can do five layers, whichever it is that you want. How big your pie would like it to be. Beautiful. And then if you want a real long dish for a larger party, which is absolutely wonderful. And the this cool thing wonderful. about this pie is that you can put not only the peppers, if you are, these are not spicy peppers, these are roasted red bell peppers, right. yellow peppers. This will be baking at what temperature and for how long? About, uh, about 300. Um, 
degrees 300 to 150, mm -hmm. and it depends about 15, 20 minutes, depending of course enough. on the size of your pie. Good. So if you have this as a smaller one like that, so I would say about 20 minutes or so. I want to put a little bit of oregano on top of that, okay. just to give it a little bit more color in there. And we're going to put a couple of more tomatoes, just to make it look a little pretty there. Hey, beautiful. Now let's see the finished version here. And we'll put our lovely finished dish over here, and you're going to make a little dressing for it, right? Correct. Okay. We're going to put a little bit of the olive oil. Mm -hmm. A little bit of the olive oil in there. I just love this oil. And of course, plenty of garlic. Oh yes, we have plenty of garlic. About six put a little... juicy cloves of garlic. Just a little, a little garlic. A little bit of salt, <laughs> and uh, and of course some fresh cilantro. Wash it very well, and so yummy, tastes delicious. Okay, it and smells we'll... wonderful. Hub. Can we put a little bit more in there? La, 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 la. Why don't we get this down we and go. then we can add more because I need to find this little thing and we'll oh, use my little, my little, <laughs> I've had this little mini chop. My mom gave this to me years ago. I'll just pulse it a bit here. Okay, and we oh, have this wonderful. lovely cilantro. So we'll just put a little bit in here so you can take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so just perfect. a little paste, okay, and we'll drizzle that around the top. But next, we have our, we're making a mole sauce, a green mole sauce from scratch, so you don't need to rely on the jars in the store anymore, and then a beautiful chili relleno. Great. Yeah. Well, first I have to tell you that Susanna makes 26 varieties of mole sauce, so we thought that those little <laughs> chocolate moles in the supermarket were all that could be done with mole were wrong, 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 and this is a verde mole sauce today, and, and you, you were telling me off camera, you can buy one of the pre-made mole sauces, but yes, you would you recommend can. we doll it up a bit? Yes, exactly. I mean, it depends if you're gonna buy the chocolate mole, you can put a little bit of, of chocolate and you can saute a little bit of the sesame seeds and a little bit of that just to give it a little bit more flavor on it if you have to do it that way. Now we're gonna do the mole verde, as we Good. talked about. Okay. And I think we're gonna start with sauteing a little bit of, of course we have pistachios and we have almonds and we have pumpkin seeds. And you do have to cook them a little bit. Okay. And we're going to do end the sesame seeds as well. There we go. Sesame seeds. And here we go. Okay, so we want to wait until all the seeds and the nuts are browned, and then what do we add to this? Well, what we're going to do is put it in the blender. Will we be adding anything else to it at this point? Mm-hmm. Good. All the other goodies. And we're going to put a little bit of the tomatillo sauce which we have right here. There's a fresh tomatillos and we have roasted them mm -hmm. and blended that as well. Here we go. And of course, a little bit of the garlic, which you know I love that. Yes, and I know you, you love know. cilantro and as well. And cilantro, which <laughs> All of not it. one of your favorites, but that's what we'll do here. We'll put it in that's there. That's okay, I'm in the minority. We know that. <laughs> do, would you like some? And the poblano chiles that have been roasted as well. And we'll just throw that in there. And this is how we're gonna make our sauce. Now, I have tortilla, because it also takes tortilla, and we're gonna, we have already cooked it. Okay, so we're still adding a little bit of onion. and A little bit of onion in here. And we'll put a little bit more. And just to make it. the whole thing move, we need some liquid. A little bit of the, vegetable for your broth. vegetable broth. So we'll do a little bit of Just that enough here. to almost cover the ingredients. Yeah, we can, you know, it depends. I mean, you can put a little bit of it in there, and then you, if you need a little bit more, you just put a little bit more and make it, so the sauce has to be thick. Okay, let's start it out on low and pulse this because we have some hot ingredients in here, okay? Okay, we have a couple more ingredients to put in and then we'll be sauteing it and we want yes, lettuce, okay. right? So we're gonna put a little bit of the lettuce. Mm -hmm. the green leaf, I love the green leaf. Yes, especially for that. A little bit of that. That should do it. We should do it. Clear and a couple powder. of the serrano chiles, of course, these are very important. And yes. it really depends on how hot you really want it. <laughs> how hot we want it. <laughs> okay, here we go. And then we'll blend that. Okay, it's looking good. Okay. It's looking good. Okay, now we're doing the finishing touches on our mole sauce. You have some, well, just a few renegade uh, sesame seeds in there and some onions and olive oil, and there you go. <laughs> and okay, now we're gonna put the sauce in here because be besides roasting everything and, and, and sauteing everything previous to that and making the sauce, you still have to put a little love into it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we're gonna put that sauce in here. 
but you get everything you just I tasted this off camera, by the way, and it, this is <laughs> fabulous. Okay, that goes into this bowl, and then we're going to start pre preparing the poblano chili relleno in just a moment. Correct. Here we go. Here we go. Perfect. So when it's cooked, we'll just set this aside, clean this off, and you're ready for the chilies. So now we're doing the chilies, and they're stuffed with vegetables, and so far we already have going in our skillet some garlic and onions and a little bit of cilantro and zucchini and now some tomatoes, mm -mm -mm. a little bit of salt. And this is going to be sauteed down for just a little bit. And here we have some roasted poblanos. Smelling good. Okay. So what do we do from and here? Then what we do from here is just go ahead and take a little bit of, as you have roasted these peppers already, and take some of the black nut of it. We'll put it over here on the side, and we cut it in half. If you don't have a little knife, you can just use your fingers. Use your hands. Yeah, why not? And then what we do from here, here we go, all of that right there, and we go from here is to start doing this number. Okay. And now... It's a little different kind of relleno. It's a very different kind of relleno. You know, now, you can also use the batter and, and, and make it... Uh, um, I like this, with, I like I mean, this I like version I like the freshness yeah. of this. It's very pretty, and the colors look gorgeous, and it's not fattening whatsoever. Mm -mm. So all the wonderful vegetables in it. Beautiful. And of course, I like to always use a lot of greens, and um, so it. see, this is what you do. Now, you can, after this is done, is also put cheese on it, mm -hmm. if you prefer to have some cheese, any kind of cheese that you mm -hmm. would like, like Monterey Jack, so it's just a little bit, or, or goat's cheese, uh, mm -hmm. um, what we use. And you can decorate it with a little more. So is this the finishing touch now? There. Just a little bit of and fresh cilantro? And this is what we do, exactly. Just well, a little bit of fresh cilantro on there. Melted cheese, if you would like, you can put a little bit of cheese on it. And also bake it if you want to, only if you want to have the melted cheese. The melted if not, cheese. Then you're just wonderful, a little olive oil on top of it, served over a bit of greens, and you have a delicious vegetarian meal and very filling as well. Very good. Now we'll go to David Berkeley and find out which beer he would serve with our dishes today. Regina, these Mexican dishes are probably, like most Mexican dishes, best accompanied by an ice-cold Mexican beer. There's certainly enough of good ones to choose from since Mexico produces a large number of fermented beverages. Now, I don't know if you know, Regina, but the largest percentage of those fermented beverages are actually produced from fruit and cactus. Now, one of those is tequila, probably the best-known spirit outside of the borders of Mexico. It is a, it's a spirit that is made from the agave plant. It's fermented and distilled. And in the stores, the viewers will find, oh, they'll find silver or white tequila. They'll find reposado, which is an intermediate form, and they'll find añejo. Now, the silver or the white is the one that's most, most commonly used for margarita. The añejo, which is the oldest, is golden and amber tinted because it spends one year in the barrel. Now, certainly you should have an ice-cold Mexican beer to go with these dishes, but how about an aperitif, a true margarita? Simplest thing possible. Get a big spoonful of chipped ice, put in an ounce and a half of tequila, one ounce of fresh and only fresh lime juice, and then half an ounce of triple sec. Shake it and put it into a prepared martini glass with salt around the rim. Now you have a perfect aperitif to your Mexican dinner. dishes you've made. I can't wait to come to your restaurant. Absolutely scrumptious. So you'll be seeing us soon. All well, I time. certainly hope so. <laughs> Salud y provecho. Sante. To find out more about Regina's vegetarian table, visit our PBS online website at pbs.org.